Hello and welcome back to the Littlest Petcast. I'm your host James and today we will be talking about this episode, Blythe's Crush. And honestly, this is just a really good episode. Uh, I might not have as much to say about it because it's just good, but you know, who knows? But, but like you'll know before I know right now. So, anyway, it begins with Blythe and Sue in the park, and Sue is teaching Blythe how to rollerblade. Blythe is just impressed that she can do it at all, but then Sue rollerblades with one foot, which makes Blythe even more impressed. Blythe wonders if there's any tricks you can't do, but then Sue's like, nah, you can rollerblade one-footed. And Blythe is like, no, I can't. But then she just, then Sue's like, no, nah, just do it now. And then, like, Blythe does it. And for a little bit, like, she's actually getting the hang of it. Then, like, I, I gotta say, I couldn't rollerblade on one foot. I have a really bad sense of balance. Like honestly like just standing up on a bus just like messes me up but as Blythe is doing it uh she crashes is she crashes into a skateboarder and they both fall over Blythe is like wondering uh if the skateboarder's okay and the skateboarder uh, says he is, and then he emerges from the shadows, and Blythe sees the skateboarder and thinks he's hot. And then uh, they start talking, and Blythe is just infatuated and kind of just is a little unfocused in this. And then uh, the guy runs off after making sure Blythe is okay, because that's the gentlemanly thing to do. Make sure the person who crashes into you is okay. Anyway, but then Blythe noticed that he dropped his keys, and, like, he runs off before, uh, like, Blythe can say anything and get the keys back to him. And then the theme song, and then... Uh, at the pet shop, Sunil is practicing a card trick by, like, holding a card up to his head and trying to guess what number it is. But he keeps guessing numbers that aren't in the deck as well as numbers that are. Like, one of them is 22. And then, like, another one is, like, 103. Which he pulls away and he sees it's a 3. And he says... Hey, it's a three. I'm getting better at this. But then, uh, Zoe just runs in screaming with an apparent emergency. Um, and startles Neil, who then has to pick up his cards while listening to Zoe's emergency, which is that her beret is missing, but it's actually not missing. It's, it's on her head where it always is and Sunil is like really confused about this like he asks Zoe if like she's being serious and then asks if he's not being punked or whatever I I love a good punked <laughs> reference <laughs> uh Oh, uh, man. It, like, I've never seen punked, but, like, I know the idea of the show. And just saying, am I being punked or whatever? Just, it's funny to me for some reason that I just don't entirely know. But then, uh, like, Sunil decides to play along with this. After, and then, uh, Zoe says... That Sunil can find uh, Zoe's beret with his psychic powers. And, uh, yeah, he just goes along with it and says, 
uh, close your eyes to Zoe. And Zoe closes her eyes, and then Sunil opens his eyes, takes the beret off of Zoe's hat, and tells Zoe to open her eyes. And Zoe acts like Sunil just found uh, her beret. And then she begins talking up uh, Sunil's psychic powers up to the rest of the pet shop. And whenever Sunil would interject, Zoe would cut him off. But, like, Sunil just wanted to say that, like, it was nothing and that it was actually just on her head the whole time. But Zoe just... Zoe just won't let him and just begin talking up his psychic powers. So then Blythe walks in, uh, heart still a flutter, and then trips. And then the pets ask what's going on because she u- usually doesn't trip, but I don't know. She has, she did fall down the dumb waiter. Maybe clumsiness isn't as foreign to her as some may think. But, uh, when Blythe says it's nothing, they insist that it is something. And then Blythe says, yeah, it is something. And then she tells the pets what happened. While also slipping in the word cute on accident. I guess, I guess this would be a Freudian slip, but I don't know. With the word cute instead of any, you know, higher things on the romance naughtiness list. <clears throat> Whatever. So, um, the girls kind of figure out what's going on. I mean, who wouldn't after she said, like, cute? three or four times when referring to the guy. And then Zoe says that Sunil is psychic and can help Blythe find her boyfriend. But then Blythe says that he's not her boyfriend. (laughs) And then uh, Sunil just plays down his psychic ability more by saying, oh, I'm not that good at it. Or whatever. But then, uh, like, the pets kind of force it anyway. Yeah, I'm just realizing there's a lot of forcing going on in this episode. There's, like, Sue forcing Blythe to rollerblade on one foot. And then the pets forcing Sunil to use his psychic stuff. Eh, it's not harmful, I guess. And I'm sure that, like, if it got too serious, like, they wouldn't allow them to do it. But still, it's it's a bit odd now that I'm saying it out loud. So, um... Anyway... Uh, Blythe gives Sunil the keys and tries to psychically deduce where Blythe's mystery man is. He falls asleep first, the first time, but when uh, the rest of the pets wake him up, uh, he goes at it again and says uh, the location is the corner of Maple and Main, which is a very specific place and uh you know Blythe says it's not too far from there and uh she starts going off but then Sunil says I'm not I'm not so sure of my psychic ability I might be leading you on a wild goose chase but Blythe has confidence in Sunil and trusts his um psychic powers after all, like, you've, Bly- Blythe knows he already has hypnosis powers. 
psychic powers might not be outside of the realm of possibility. After all, she can talk to animals. Are there ex animals as well? There has to be ex animals, because Russell can lift like two preteen? Just teenage girls? I'm not really sure the age of these characters, actually. Either way, mutant animals have to be a thing. Like, and Blythe is watching over two of them. And, uh, yeah, it's just at least two of them. Maybe three, depending on, uh, like, if Pepper can actually dodge any, um, moving object. Projectile, that's the word I was looking for, projectile. Anyway, um, wow, there are, wh why is, why is this, like, a thing? I mean, I know I just got it off of TV tropes, but... It's, it still makes sense. So, um, anyway. After all of that, uh, Zoe d wants to tag along with Blythe because she wants to see how this plays out. And, uh, Blythe agrees to it. So then after that, Mrs. Twombly introduces a parrot that's staying with them for the day. Named uh, Esteban. And uh, uh, when Russell's introducing everyone, Vinny introduces himself and starts dancing a little. And then Esteban insults Vinny's dancing. And um, Esteban says that he is a legend, but the rest of the pets don't know about Esteban and so he tells his story of how he lived in the outskirts of a village where the villagers are being played by the pets that are there and then a group of monkey bandits which is weird because Minka is also a monkey I don't know it's this is just some weird racial profiling or species profiling I guess I guess it would be racial profiling because mink is a pink monkey and the monkeys that are attacking are brown which yeah that's I I made this even worse than I thought it was gonna be Way to go, me. And even after I said this was a good episode, but... I mean, it is good. And this is just... This is just odd. And we'll see why... A little later. That it doesn't matter... Terribly? I don't know. I get... Like, they're not thinking about this. I don't think. But anyway... So a group of monkey bandits attacks the village and ties up the villagers. But then the sheriff, played by Vinny, comes out and dances but gets caught as well. So uh, because of all of that, Esteban frees the villagers and then lures the monkeys off a cliff. And because he just, he just flies over the cliff while angering the monkeys. And uh, like the monkeys fall down. And, uh, like, the whole village celebrates except for the sheriff, who Esteban tells to leave the dancing to me. Because that's how they celebrate. So then uh, Esteban says his story became famous in Colombia, which is where he's from. And then it went viral. And then uh, Vinny's mad because... Uh, he insulted his dancing and now doesn't trust him, which would be odd be if, like, 
Well, no, it actually fits Vinny's character. And it's actually a really interesting avenue. Because, like, Vinny would probably be the first to believe all of this. If, uh... If he wasn't insulted. Especially with his, like, favorite pastime. So, um... Anyway, we cut to Blythe racing on her... They call it a scooter? It looks like a moped? I don't know. It's like a motorized scooter. Which... I don't know. It's weird. A little weird to me. Because, like... I don't know. She can't drive. So why is she driving a different motorized vehicle? I don't know. But anyway, so uh, Blythe sees a guy who she thinks is the guy that she crashed into because they have the same jacket on and are skateboarding. But it isn't him. It's a different guy in uh, the same skateboarding crew, the Red Rippers, I believe. And uh, when Blythe asks, uh, like, which member... Uh, she informs him that, uh, the guy has a little scar on his cheek. And then, uh, the guy says that that guy's name is Josh Sharp. And then he's also probably at the library. And then, um, he goes off and Blythe thanks the guy. And then Zoe continues to insinuate love. But Blythe brushes it off again by saying, like, I'm just trying to return his keys, you know? But Zoe knows what's up. Zoe knows what's up. Zoe and I are pure shipping trash together. Uh, oh, that's how we bond. That's how we would bond if Zoe wasn't, you know, fictional. <laughs> but still. So, um, back at the pet shop, uh, Mrs. Twombly leaves her tablet on the counter, and then Vinny looks it up, looks up, tries to look up Esteban on the tablet, but finds nothing. Uh, then in the play area, Esteban talks about how he wrestled an alligator, and then someone asked if that was dangerous. And he says, yes, but Danger is my middle name, and my last name, and my nickname. And then Vinny walks up saying, his friend asks if his friends call him Esteban Danger, Danger, Danger. And then Vinny pulls Esteban aside to tell him what he found on, uh, and I quote, the electric box thingy. And, um threatened to reveal it to everyone but then Sunil like rushes in and believes that Blythe is in trouble but only has the psychic ability to go on and again he doesn't trust it and the rest of the pets think say that Sunil should use his psychic powers to deduce where Blythe is and, okay, yeah, this is, I wrote this one down earlier when I was making my notes and watching the episode, but now this is like the second mention of racism in this episode. So, like, for the second time this episode, they refer to Sunil's psychic powers as a swami thing and yeah to me that just seems like just a tinge racist like i mean technically sunil is supposed to be from india or at least be an indian mongoose and i don't know like it still seems just like a hint racist 
that like just because you're from India and have psychic powers means you're a swami but like yeah so like I forgot to mention this a little earlier but like the reason like the whole like monkeys thing doesn't matter terribly is because the whole thing's made up anyway so like I guess like he said monkey because that's how he's used to telling it and and that like you didn't know that there was like a monkey there but still like aside from like these two like it's not even like heavy racism it's just like like little blotches and I don't even think they like mean anything it's just weird but you know otherwise good episode yeah like that's what I'm trying to say this is like it's not it's not like outright racist I guess like yeah I guess like the best way to put it is that everyone's just uninformed at best but like I don't know, I seem to be talking an awful lot about racism this episode. But, either way, aside from those two things, both unintentional, I think, this is actually, I actually just like this episode. Because, like, I don't know, it's a fairly normal episode so far, and it just continues to be fairly normal. Like, especially compared to, like, the random ska song last time, and, like, the insane dialogue choices from last time, and especially compared to stuff in the future. Oh boy, stuff in the future. But, yeah, oh, and I also just noticed that this episode's going on for a long time, so, hey, I have more stuff to say than I thought I would. Mostly about racism. <laughs> okay, that's, we're, we're moving on now. We're moving on now. So, when Sunil, um, uses his psychic powers, uh, he sees a big lion... And then everyone deduces that she's at the zoo. But the lion is actually in front of the library. Which, like, are lions, like, common in front of libraries? I know they're in front of, like, the library in, like, my city. But I thought that was kind of special to my city. Because, like, I don't know, one year, uh, we had a bunch of, like, other lions decorated and placed all over town. And for, like, a little art thing. But, like, uh, and then they were eventually sold to different places and stuff. And you can still see some. It's just not, like, the amount of lions that you could see before and I always thought that was just like I don't know something for my city but I guess libraries just lions are commonplace in libraries so uh Blythe and Zoe see Josh and enter to follow Josh but in the library they see uh, the no animals allowed sign which Zoe reacts to how insulting and then uh that that just becomes like a running gag. They do it two more times in the episode. I don't know. It's all right. It's it's kind of funny. So, uh Blythe has Zoe hide in her bag 
And then Zoe yips when she sees Josh, and Blythe covers it up with a cough. And then that happens again, and then they see Josh enter the bathroom, and then Blythe waits outside the bathroom like a sane person. (laughs) But then Zoe asks for water, so Blythe gets Zoe some water, but then Josh leaves again and is now on a bus, which uh, they follow. So then the rest of the pets arrive at the zoo, and we see another no pets allowed sign, but this time it's not a dog on the sign like it was at the library. It's an assortment of signs with all of the animals that are currently present there, which, like, yeah, Vinny does point out that it makes no sense why animals aren't allowed in a zoo. Even though he says that there are are no fleas at a flea market. Which, I hope there aren't any fleas at a flea market if I want to walk my furry animal down there with me. Or, I guess, dog in this case, because cats don't usually walk down there. And I wouldn't walk my cat down there because I don't walk cats. But, I don't know, for people who walk cats, maybe. Who knows? So, um... Sunil informs everyone that Blythe has left the zoo. Or at least the place that Sunil deduced. And Sunil deduces a new place by a bull. And they deduce that, uh... It's a ice cream shop... But it's actually a skate rink with a bull as the logo. So this is like the second time Sunil has accurately saw something in relation to where Blythe is. But not get it right. Which begs the question that like if Sunil is psychic. But he doesn't know how to use or manage his powers. Then where is Professor X when you see him? When you need him? Like, I'm sure he'd be good with pets, you know? I guess I guess they're in downtown city and the X-Men are in New York. So, uh... Maybe it's just out of their way, but they have the airplane thing i'm sorry x-men fans i don't know what it's called off the top of my head i've read it before and i know what it was be called when i say the name but other than that i don't know so um anyway at the skate rink uh blythe and zoe enter And they tried to catch Josh by uh, borrowing a skateboard and skating to Josh. But then uh, they miss him on the first round. So when they go back for the second round, uh, Blythe actually gets knocked off course and just gets knocked around and then just falls off her skateboard and slides down into the middle of the rink. So, the pets arrive at the ice cream shop, but don't see Blythe. And Sunil is confused because there are bowls, but no Blythe. But I would like to point out, Sunil, that you only saw one bowl, not many. This is where Professor X would come in handy. Because you know that Professor X could clearly deduce that one bowl means one bowl. So, anyway, the other pets dig into the ice cream, and the rest of the pets reassure Sunil, and they say that not all psychics are right 100% of the time, even though Sunil has been, he just doesn't know how to interpret it. Again, where are you, Professor X? But whatever. Esteban encourages Sunil, 
by referencing his story, but Vinny rolls his eyes because he knows it's not true and will reveal it when this whole situation with Blythe is over. So then the soda jerker, who's a goth girl, chases out the pets, again after saying how insulting that no pets are allowed in the ice cream shop, which, you know, makes sense why no pets would be allowed in the ice cream shop, because they're just digging into the ice cream and sprinkles, and there's just going to be pet hair everywhere. You know? And feathers, and... Actually, I don't think lizards, um... Uh, leave anything. I, I mean, I guess they shed, and, as we'll see in a future episode, lose their extremities, but... Uh, I don't think they leave anything, like, naturally, like, hair around, you know? So, uh, they get chased out, and they carry Sunil, who's trying to deduce where Blythe is now. Uh, Blythe climbs out of the skate rink, and they see Josh leave. So they follow him to where he's going, and then Zoe asks if they should just call it for today Blythe says no because like she's already come this far and uh, like she's not going to give up now and then Zoe makes a comment on how love can make people do strange things but then Blythe says I'm not in love I'm just an innocent key returner is all so then while the pets are running, Sunil has another vision and asks uh, the rest of the pets to turn around because he has no agency right now because he's being carried. So then Josh stops at the park and Blythe fo follows. So uh, Josh is actually in a band and they're playing a concert today and he just got there just as the concert is starting, which seems very unprofessional for like a band member but I don't know Josh seems really busy so I guess it's a miracle he got there at all and that he's you know in good enough shape to play in the band so uh, they start playing and you know it sounds good so far and Blythe catches up and they're in the crowd and Zoe gets really excited because you know the music's good and rushes to the stage so Zoe takes the mic and starts singing and honestly I re like this is probably one of my favorite songs in the entire series like cause like it fits the series very well not like some like it's like my favorite like actuals like one of my favorite actual songs and like not one of my favorite what what are you doing what the heck is up with this kind of song and like the really cool thing about this scene is that sometimes we hear Zoe's lyrics but then sometimes we hear what everyone else is hearing which is just a bunch of dog barks even though Zoe's playing to the crowd, like you do, um, like, all they can hear is dog barks, and they just go with it, because, you know, dog barks are cool. And But so is the actual song. It It's about how uh, having a new crush, and, you know, because of Blythe's whole thing, so then Blythe goes on stage uh, to give Josh uh, his keys and Josh thanks her and asks how she found him and Blythe says she's psychic which Josh just rolls with. Uh, so Josh gives Blythe a hug and Blythe loopy on love falls off the stage but instead of uh, hitting her uh, head or anything she uh, crowd surfs and then Josh joins in with the crowd surfing because like uh, he's impressed that uh, she's crowd surfing and 
you know, I just like this moment where like they're both crowd surfing side by side. It's actually like a really cool, really romantic moment. And it's just like it's like a chill romantic moment, you know, not like not like a big gesture or like a grand kiss in front of the Eiffel Tower or a proposal in front of Madison Square Garden. It's just they're crowd surfing and just looking into each other's eyes. And I think that's sweet. So the other pets arrive at the park. They don't see Blythe yet. But then they see a stampede of people coming by and everyone else is trapped. And then Vinny attacks Esteban by saying, you told Sunil to follow his instinct and now we're all going to get crushed to death. What are you going to do? And then Esteban comes up with the idea to um, have all the pets grab onto Vinny. And then he takes uh, Vinny's accusatory finger would it be a finger like do lizards have fingers or like what would they be called i don't even know what they would be called and anyway he grabs the finger and then flies everyone to the tree and rescues everyone uh so after Blythe gets out of the crowd surf and Zoe gets off the stage, they meet up and Blythe compliments Zoe on her singing. And, uh, like, Zoe uh, accepts the compliment. And then uh, Zoe was wondering how everything with uh, Josh went. And then uh, Blythe says that... Uh, she got a hug after returning keys. And then Zoe says, just like in the movies. Um, Zoe, what movies are you watching? <laughs> Cause like, I know, I know a hug is like a lot for a preteen? Teen? Yeah, this is not at all helpful. <laughs> I am not sure how old these characters are. Oh boy. But either way, it's a lot. But that's not how it usually happens in the movies. <laughs> Unless it does, which what movies are you watching? Because <laughs> I'd like to see a movie that ends where the big romantic gesture is just a hug like that that's got to be some kind of fun in any way so on the branch uh sunil is putting himself down about how he doesn't have psychic powers or whatever but then uh esteban encourages him again and then sunil asks if they all concentrate together they might figure it out and so they concentrate together but when Sunil opens his eyes he sees Blythe and then points it out to everyone and so the pets call out to Blythe and they explain that Sunil found Blythe with his psychic abilities which he did he did end of sentence even though Sunil downplays it a little bit so uh, Esteban flies everyone else down, but then um, Vinny talks to Esteban, and then Esteban confesses that he was lying, and that he's just a good storyteller, and that his middle name isn't actually Danger, it's Marion. But then uh, Vinny says that Esteban is actually a hero, because he did end up saving everyone from the human stampede. So, yeah, they make up and they become friends. But then Esteban tries to tell another story. But then Vinny says, don't push your luck, Mary. <laughs> I just like, I just like the phrase, don't push your luck. Anyway, Sunil is talking with Blythe 
and he says he doesn't have psychic powers really he just opened his eyes and saw Blythe but then Blythe points out that he did guide everyone to the park where she in fact was but Sunil still seems doubtful about it because he started this wild goose chase but then Blythe sees Josh at the corner of Maple and Maine and points out to Sunil that uh, he had the right boy at the right place, just at the wrong time. And then Sunil pulls out his cards and says, numbers just aren't his thing. And that's how the episode ends. And, you know, this is just like a fairly normal episode, like I said earlier. Minus the two, like, tinges of racism. This is just like a normal episode where, like, normal things happen and I'm including psychic powers in this world of normal because it gets crazy later like really crazy like I don't I don't even know where to begin like at least psychic powers makes sense in everything when compared to other things, especially other things coming up. So, uh, yeah, I just like this episode, uh, like, just cause, like, it plays to the more normal side of the series, and, like, yeah, a lot of my favorite episodes play to the more normal MLP side, or to the insane uh, Phineas and Ferb side, and just not spending too much time with the other. And, like, yeah, I just like this episode, because it feels more normal, it feels regular, it feels just like, you know, something that you just watch on a Saturday morning, instead of just, a crazy thing you talk about even though I've been talking about it for over 40 minutes at this point wow okay so that is it for this episode of Lil's Petcast be sure to leave a comment on Shout Engine or leave a review on Apple Podcast and join me next time when we talk about the episode Dumb Dumb Waiter thanks for listening